My battle station was the signal bridge. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a very interesting place to, to be because, uh, of course, being a medic, you had nothing to do until something bad happened. But let me tell you, when the, that uh, stray five-inch shell, and that hit on my battle station, we were very, very busy. Uh, I had, there were two of us. Canvin was, actually, Canvin was a senior corpsman there. And uh, we had two stretcher bearers, and they were busy. <laughs> but, and then the two fellows that died were right there, too. And of course, that was the saddest part of the whole thing, as far as I was concerned. Hell, I'd played cards with these guys. We'd swap cigarettes and the whole bitch, you know. I mean, hell, we're, you know, you get to be like brothers up there. They were spotters and were just in the right place to be the end of life. But uh, after we had kind of, where I was at when it happened, normally I would be outside, but for some reason that day I was inside laying on the bottom bunk in the conning tower reading the book for whom the bells toll. <laughs> I've never finished it. And anyhow, why the next thing I know, everything was the kabang and one. Uh, Guy had just went by my bunk and and uh, he's just stepping through the hatch and he went flying back and anyhow I went back and grabbed him, rolled him over and I says you all right and he rolled over, kind of patted him. Oh God, Doc! He says I guess I am. He says what the hell happened? I said I don't know, but I'll be back and check on you. Well, anyhow when I got outside I I didn't get back and uh, what. Uh, I've always felt a little guilty because he he was severely injured, but an officer come up and took care of him, and uh, got him to sick bay. Pretty well got things all cleaned up up there and, and um, everybody. And I went by the uh, 40 millimeter mount there, and this big old gunner mate dropped down there, and he said, "Hey, doc." He says, "Look between my shoulder blades. Damn," he says, "There's something hurting me there," and, and uh, so I opened up his shirt. And, there was, there was a piece of shrapnel about three inches long that was stuck right in, you know how lightning is? Well, this is kind of the way this was, and it was sticking right in between two vertebrae. I said, hell, man, I said, you got a chunk of iron in you. And he said, well, pull it out. And <laughs> I said, no, you got to go to sick bay. Why? I said, because, by God, I just I don't want to pull it out up here. I haven't got anything to help you with if it's, if it's where I, it could be. I didn't want to tell him how bad it could be. So anyhow, finally I, got a, I caught a stretcher bearer and I said, take this guy down and give him to Dr. Shambaugh. And he asked him why, and I said, well, look here on his back. And I said, for God's sake, don't let anybody touch it. Because the way I saw it, it could be right into the, into the uh, spinal column and could leave him an invalid for life. So anyhow, I, of course, I went on and did my duties. <laughs> About 30 minutes later, he came back. Disgust and storm, and damn it, he says that gun might have I'm been needed before I got back here. And I, <laughs> yeah, but I said, thank God you're back. I said, hey, if I'd have pulled that damn thing out and you'd become an invalid, I said, what the hell would you do then? Well, hell, he said, wouldn't do anything, Doc. He said, couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> so we were practical. There were some humorous parts of it too. But when that night, when that was over, that day was over. I took off my shirt, my pants, and my shoes, and throw them over the side. They were that dirty. It was all blood. It was a gory mess. Now, some people will say that friendly fire, but hey, it happened. And it, it wasn't, you, when you have that many people, that many guns, it's going to happen. Can't help it. That gun misfired somewhere. I'm sure it wasn't fired on purpose.